I am super stoked today to be with Mary Tobin, the Eastern Executive Director of an incredible organization called The Mission Continues. Uh, this is a national uh, nonprofit group that um, has over 70 staff members and they, uh, their main goal, I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit more about it, is to help veterans continue their service after they transition out by uh, serving under uh, resource communities throughout the country. Just a tremendous group that's doing a lot of really great work and we're super excited to talk with Mary, hear her story, hear a little bit more about the mission continues and, uh, and talk about ways that you guys can get involved with this great group. So Mary, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Thank you, Jordy, for having me. So you have a very inspiring story yourself. I know you grew up in, uh, in Georgia and Atlanta, and then right after high school went to West Point Military Academy, which is quite an accomplishment. Can you tell everybody a little bit about that and then uh, what you did in the Army? Absolutely. So I grew up on the southwest side of Atlanta, um, a, a pretty interesting background. Um, initially grew up in poverty and um, had some uh, incredible opportunities come out way in high school um, through JRTC, um, where this old Vietnam veteran convinced me um, to apply for the service academies. And he told me that the one that I should absolutely go to was West Point. Um, and I replied, why would I want to do that with my life? And he said, Mary, you'll make a four-year decision to become a leader that you can go, that you can use to go anywhere in your life. So do it. And and I, I drank the Kool-Aid and, and wound up getting accepted to West Point and left home when I was 17 years old. Um, spent, uh, I think, four amazing years at the Academy. Had a, had a great time. And you won't hear most graduates say that. Um, but I think it's because I took advantage of every single opportunity I could and made some lifelong friends. I spent 10 years in the Army as a communications officer, including two, two deployments to Iraq. Um, I was medically retired. Uh, at the age of 30, which kind of devastated me. I thought I was going to be in the Army for at least 30 years. I wanted to be Colin Powell. Pretty much, you know, people have posters on their walls of like <laughs> music stars. I had like Colin Powell oh, and Patton. Yeah. So that just lets you know where my mind was. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I remember waking up the first day after I left the service thinking, what do I do now? And it wasn't like I, it wasn't a sense of I don't have skills to get a job. It was Every day in the Army, I felt like I had a sense of purpose, and suddenly I didn't have a mission. And I found my way to um, the federal uh, sector, and so I worked um, in Okinawa supporting Marines. So I just couldn't get away from the military, and I did a lot with the tsunami cleanup and made my way back to D.C. Um, working for the Department of Housing and Urban Development where I connected with other West Point grads who were doing um, community service work first around veterans in homelessness. Um, and through that, I made my way to an organization um, called The Mission Continues. And I thought to myself, this is perfect. Um, and I began to volunteer with The Mission Continues because I one day saw in this uh, community service project in Brooklyn, um, literally over a hundred veterans descend upon a park where um, just weeks earlier, a 12 year old girl had been raped. And we decided that we were gonna partner with that community um, to transform this space. So it, no, it would no longer be a symbol of fear or hurt or pain, but it could be a symbol of hope. Um, and just spending that time with the community, spending that time with other veterans who were doing this for free. No, no incentive except I wanna give back to my country. I knew I had to be a part of this organization. Good for you. Wow, what a great story. And uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I see a theme in your life is that you are committed to helping people. And talk, talk about that. Like, did you always have that in you? Did you know when you went into service that this would be something you'd do the rest of, you know, for your career? As you know, I, you know, I think about that question often. That's, that's a pretty thoughtful question too, Jordy. I, you know, I can remember my earliest memory of a sense of service was uh, my mother. I could, so unfortunately, I had uh, family members who um, were addicted to drugs. And I could remember every night, no matter how little food we had in the household, my mother would always prepare plates for my family members. And if they came to the back door, and I heard a knock. My mom would say, go ahead and, 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 and give the plate to 
uncle so-and-so, aunt so-and-so. And she, we didn't have that much money, but she would fold up $2, $5, have me put it on top of the plate and give it to them. And when I was younger, I was baffled. I'm like, we don't have yeah. food. We don't have money. How is it that you're still giving? Um, even if, even though it's family, how is it that you're still giving? And my mother would always say, but for the grace of God, that could be us. And I think that stuck with me. It, 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 it gave me a motivation that no matter what situation or position I was in, that I could always give something. If it wasn't food, if it was money, I could give my, my heart, I could give my skills and experience. And so I was always encouraged, no matter where I was, um, to serve others because it could be worse. Um, and so I think that that just was a thread that flowed through my life. And so when I got into the military, it was just like every day is that's what it is. Even if I didn't have a good time in my unit, it was like, so what my whole life has a purpose. I have a focus. And so when I got out of the service, I felt lost, right? My, I, I was told Mary, you know, get a good job. You got to make a lot of money. That's how you continue to make your family proud. Um, but it just wasn't enough for me. And so I committed to finding a balance. How can I professionally serve people? How can I still make a living, but make a difference? And, um, and then I found out that there's a way, there's a whole bunch of people out here who are finding, finding that, that balance. And, and for me, marrying my military service with my sense of purpose and, and my heart to serve is perfect. And finding an organization where that can happen every day, um, I don't know. I think I feel this is the closest to like my true purpose and my calling in my life that, that I've ever gotten to. Mm -hmm. And I say that a lot. I, matter of fact, I told my boss that last week, and I told her no one paid me to say it. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that doesn't mean you got to give me a, a raise yeah. or anything like that. But like, it's it's the closest, and, and so I feel pretty fortunate to have that balance. That's great. Your your mom sounds like just an amazing uh, woman, and uh, you are an incredible, inspiring person to uh, to sort of carry that torch for her and the the your sense of uh, you know duty, I guess, or wanting yeah. to help your fellow you know soldiers, and and uh, it's just amazing the, that the work you're doing. Talk about you know, how, this was your calling, how you said you wanted to help and give back. And that's what gives you enjoyment and passion. How, talk about how important that is for soldiers coming out of the military to, to go down that path and whatever, wherever that may lead, but how it just makes life easier when you feel like you're doing good work and you're, you know, excited to get out of bed every morning. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think about the first morning that, I was no longer required to put on the uniform. At first, it was a sense of freedom. You're just like, yes, no one's telling me when to wake up. I don't have to get up and run, you know, three, four, five miles. And, you know, I have this freedom that I have not experienced before. Um, so there's that side of it. But then there's this um, sense of loss. Like there's this hole there. There's this gap where I knew that what I was doing was contributing to a greater cause or it was helping to make someone better. If it wasn't myself, like physically or going to a school, it was my soldiers that I was uh, called to lead or to serve alongside. We made each other better, we supported each other. Or if it was my commanders where I believed in their mission, I followed them, and then we made these amazing things happen. Or if it was a different country that I'd gone into and say Iraq where I'm now helping to rebuild schools or to yeah. give access to clinics um, for children and mothers and fathers um, that have been impacted by war. And now all of a sudden, all of that is gone. And now my mission is just to make money. Um, it, it, is a, it is a hole that sometimes people we're not able to articulate immediately, but it creeps on, creeps up on us over the years. And then we'll find ourselves kind of like, oh, I'll do a community service project here. I'll build something for someone there. I'll help this elderly person here and there. And then over time, we'll realize, you know what? This sense of service, it actually just evolved. And so yeah. we search for ways to continue to help without even realizing it. And then I think what's happening now um, 
in society is that we're realizing that it is us. It is the people that will truly change things for the better. We collectively do it just like we did in the military, period. And, and when, you, when you find those parallels, then you search for ways um, to plug yourself in. Um, I think that's what drew me to the Mission Continues. It was a collective way to always be able to plug myself in to others who believe in that, to veterans, to community members, um, no matter where you go. And so I always encourage veterans, if it's not uh, with the Mission Continues, uh, but to find ways where you can use the skills that you learn, the skills that you develop, find ways to help make your community better, to help make your family better, children in, in your local schools, because they actually need that. Like someone who just wants to give back with nothing in return. Yeah. And, and that is rare. You don't hear people saying that, but I think that veterans have a leg up in that we can make that popular again. Yeah. You know, we can make service without incentive popular again. And I've met too many veterans who feel <laughs> the same um, for that to not be the case. It is, yeah. it is, it is, it is almost uh, contagious, that right. service, yeah. That's great advice, absolutely. All right, so let's talk about the Mission Continues now. Credible organization, tell us a little bit more about some of the initiatives, what you guys are doing, how veterans can get involved. Um, with with your uh, with your work, absolutely. So, um, as as you stated earlier, we're a national nonprofit, which means that we are all over the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're in over fifty cities throughout the country, and uh, we have over eighty different operations. And operations meaning um, eighty different neighborhoods or communities where we are actively doing service. Right. So that could be um, anything from working in local schools. Uh, to local parks, to um, supporting shelters, whatever the community needs, we try to connect veteran leadership, veteran skills and experiences into those needs, right? Into those, into those communities. Um, and so not only do we have these, what we call service platoons, right? So much like being in the military, you can kind of plug into a service platoon. There is a platoon leader, a local veteran who plans out these activities and these um, volunteer opportunities and you can get connected there so um, at least once a month you're doing something to impact the community you're also doing something to connect to other veterans so we have socials so let's say you're a disabled veteran and you can't get out there and hammer and build like everyone else you can still connect to local veterans we're doing a lot virtually now too so we've had everything from um, virtual gardening, virtual cooking, um, mental health sessions. Uh, we are painting with a twist this Friday. So literally over a hundred veterans from across the country will be painting um, with other veterans and um, drinking various libations. We prefer non-alcoholic uh, <laughs> and we're connecting that way. Um, we also have leader development programs. So how do we become platoon leaders in our operations? Yeah. We have a service leadership for what we train you. How do you connect to communities? How do you work with partners? All those skills that sometimes we don't have naturally. Um, we're working with local communities. We train you for that. We have a women's veteran leadership program. Um, so that program addresses the very unique needs and challenges that women veterans face when they transition um, out of the military. Um, and we just kicked that off in March. Um, we also have something called mass deployments where um, veterans, hundreds of veterans sign up for a week long, I like, I like to call it like a service project smorgasbord and we descend upon a city and we complete uh, over 50 different uh, projects in a community of need. Wow. So um, this year, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, it got postponed, but it was supposed to be in Houston. We're shifting that to November. So if anybody wants to sign up for mass deployment, um, they can. Um, those applications are still open um, on our website. But that's just a little bit of yeah. the programs that we do. So we're constantly training our veterans to go back into the community as leaders. Um, and then of course, there's a staff of over 70 people and we support that um, every single day. And so, you know, when I get off this call, I'll get right back on the call with some of my leaders throughout yeah. the Eastern region um, and, and begin talking about the projects that we'll be doing um, this month. 
That's great. It's not just vo the volunteer uh, yeah. aspect, but then, like you said, that camaraderie, that sense yeah. of community with the other volunteers, which I think is so important yeah. to the military community, especially when, when times are tough and yes. you know you have uh, folks like the Mission Continues who you can count on for to, to help get you through that. That is, that is great. Yeah. Where can people find you? Give me your webpage, social pages in case Absolutely. people want to get involved. Yeah, so you can go to www.missioncontinues.org. Um, so that's where you find all of our programs. That's where you're able to sign up um, for the service projects that are coming up. Um, you'll see a list of virtual activities that are happening. Um, so that even now, um, with us not having host an in-person community service projects right now, um, there's still a lot of opportunity to get involved individually with your family and with other veterans. And I think that's what I love so much. We're also on Twitter. Um, so you'll type in the mission continues and we'll pop up We're on Twitter and we're also on Facebook. So that's where Facebook is where you'll get a lot of our stories. So if you want to know, okay, what is the vet veteran experience? You'll get to hear from us directly. I participated in this, this uh, park transformation. How was that for me? Um, I am feeling socially isolated. How is the mission continues helping me to connect? We have veterans in Puerto Rico right now who were just impacted um, mm -hmm. by the most recent earthquake that happened this weekend. Yeah. And I spent some time with them on a video call Saturday, just laughing and talking um, about past work and their families. And it was a joy to, oh, I mean, great. to see a building that was impacted by the earthquake in the, in the background. Oh. And I'm laughing with this veteran oh. in the foreground. And it was fantastic. It, it brought me joy. And they're the ones that, know. <laughs> you know, need the help. So um, it, it is that connection, right? Yep. Where if I, I'm looking at you, brother, I'm looking at you, sister, and I believe in you and you believe in me and, and I got your back. So, um, I mean, that did my heart glad. But, oh, man. Yeah. Mary, I can't thank you enough for, for taking some time uh, to share your story, to share the story of the mission continues. What an incredible organization. You are a super inspiring person. Thank, Thank you. you for making the world a better place. Uh, you are a, a truly a hero to this community. And I can't thank you enough for that. So I appreciate you spending some time and, uh, and please keep up the great work that you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thank you, Jody, for what you do. You keep up the good work too. <laughs>